to acknowledge the work of Trent Piercy and the, the, the history of digital computing in Australia can be traced back to one remarkable scientist, Dr. Trevor Piercy. I started researching the history of Dr. Piercy initially because of his connection to Monash University, where we have a museum of computing history. However, it soon became obvious that Piercy had a far-ranging impact on computing, mathematics, physics, and engineering across Australia and internationally. He was a serious young scientist who persuaded the CSIRO to build a computer when they really did not exist anywhere. And he changed the way we approach the processing of information. Trevor Percy was born in Woolwich in England in 1919 and attended the Imperial College of Science and Technology, London, from 1938. He graduated in 1940 with first class honours in physics. His family were not academic but were commercial barrel makers for the oil industry. So. With Britain's wartime commitments, Piercy did not continue studies for a doctorate but began work for the Air Defence Research and Development Establishment in Great Malden in Worcestershire. This was a research facility primarily involved with army radar development with over 2,500 on staff at this facility. From 1940 to 1945, Trevor Piercy undertook research in the theory section and worked on the theory of microwave physical optics, antenna design, scattering functions and propagation. He was particularly interested in the meteorological effects on long-range microwave propagation. This work required large amounts of computations and calculations and this brought him into contact with Professor Douglas Hartree and his team at Manchester University using their differential analyzer. The differential analyzer was a mechanical analog computer that used a set of wheel and disk mechanisms to solve differential equations by integration. It was his interactions with Douglas Hartree that had a major influence on Piercy's thinking about information processing. Hartree was an important figure in Britain's science-based war effort, and although bound by wartime secrecy, Hartree was aware of many of the early computing developments in the early 1940s and encouraged theoretical discussions on computing. And Piercy later referred to his conversations with Hartree as giving a great um, impetus to him thinking about mechanical computing. Piercy met his first wife, Mary Long, at Adra. She was also a physics graduate and worked with him in the theory section. The section included four men and three women led by J.N.C. Scott. They let, produced individual and joint papers regularly throughout the war. This included a paper that Piercy wrote in 1945 and later published in the Philosophical Magazine in 1946. It is acknowledged as the first time that the full calculation of wave amplitude in the neighbourhood of the cusp that uses diffraction theory was achieved. The calculation is now named the Piercy Integral. In their publication, Catastrophe Optics, in 1980, Berry and Upstill acknowledged the pioneering work of Piercy in this field with the comment that he achieved what was then a tour de force of computing, which was actually done on a differential analyzer. By the end of 1944, both English and Australian science institutions were looking forward to peacetime research, and Piercy applied for a position as head of the mathematical section under the Propagation Committee with the Division of Radio Physics, Council for Scientific and Industrial Research in Australia, later the CSIRO. This uh, division was at that point located in the grounds of the University of Sydney in the Maxim building. He travelled via the US to Australia and arrived in early 1946. Once installed in Sydney, Piercy set to the task of producing the large amounts of computation required by the research staff in radio physics. At this stage, the division was led by Edward Bowen, and they were working in the new field of radio astronomy. After spending about a year in Sydney, Piercy proposed a radical new idea that the division should build a computer even though a modern computer, which was digital, general purpose, high speed, electronic with stored programming, did not exist at this time. There have been wartime computer developments, but they're often secret. 
and these early machines did not have stored programming. Sir agreed to Piercy's suggestion, and they started work on a computer designated Sir Mark I. In a team, Piercy concentrated on the theoretical logic design, while Maston Beard, an electrical engineer, designed the hardware. They worked separately, but combined their areas of expertise, the expertise to produce a computer. Um, there's a few photographs of the computer, such as this, done in the early 1950s. After the war, there was a race to build a digital computer, and the team at Manchester University were able to run the first stored program in June, July 1948. But just over a year later, in November 1949, Piercy and his team ran their first successful sequence of operations under program control. He later recalled it was completely homegrown, some 10,000 miles distant from the mainstream development in the UK and USA. It was the fourth or fifth computer built anywhere in the world. And he foresaw many applications for a general purpose computer. In 1948, he wrote, it is not inconceivable that an automatic encyclopedic service operated through the telephone system will one day exist, which I think is pretty close to the Wikipedia. <laughs> During the 1950s and the 1960s, he used the machine for many different projects for the now named CSIRO and included work on rain making. Pierce used the new computer for early simulations in fluid dynamics and it was also used for calculations on the Snowy Mountains Authority. However, the CSIRO decided to cancel the project with problems over budget and the speed of change in overseas computing being a rival to it. It was transferred from the division in Sydney to the University of Melbourne, where it was renamed CIRAC, and operated until 1964. Piercy worked on CIRAC in Melbourne before moving to Canberra to develop the computer network for the CSIRO and their distributed offices. Today, CIRAC is preserved in the collection of Museums Victoria and is partially on display. Throughout his career, Piercy gave lectures, starting in the Maths Department at Sydney, from 1947 until 1952, and they probably the first classes on computation and the principles of programming offered in Australia. His wife Mary was a part-time lecturer in the physics department in 1947 too. He formalised his own qualifications finally with a Doctor of Science from the University of Melbourne by presenting 74 papers covering his career from 1943 to 1971. And that wasn't the end of the numbers of papers he produced, there were over a hundred. He finished his career as Foundation Dean of the Faculty of Technology at Chisholm Institute of Technology, which is now the Caulfield campus of Monash University, and he retired in 1984. From early on, Pearcey felt there was a need to create a community of computer professionals and provide a journal for technical publications. He was a founding member of the Australian Computer Society and he edited their journal. For me as a historian, one of his major achievements was a publication in 1988 of the history of computing in Australia. It's an invaluable record of how computer technology became established here. He personally knew most of the major participants in this history. And an interesting example of the diversity of his thinking at the same time while he was writing the history of computing, he was developing future strategies for computer education at Chisholm and applying for an ARC grant on a project in catastrophe theory. This is a very brief survey of Piercy's remarkable career. I have left out a number of significant events <coughs> in his activities, but that it reflects his approach to science. Think big, be confident of your own ideas and abilities so you can convince others of your projects and then think ahead. He designed and used computers, both analog and digital, for original innovative work in computer technology, physics and engineering. He proposed the development of a digital general purpose computer with stored programming when none had been completed anywhere in the world. He was 27 years old and had been at the CSIR for less than one year and felt confident enough to propose a very radical and expensive idea, and he succeeded. He was innovative, committed, and was a major contributor to Australia's technology and science. This approach to science is remembered with the work of the Piercy Foundation, 
and their recognition, recognition of innovative research. I think I'll leave it there, but I will say uh, this is an ongoing project for me. I'm still investigating his career.